Good morning and welcome to this morning's webinar uh, about setting up enterprise PDM tasks and creating automatic PDFs. Basically what we're going to do is go through creating a PDF, a PDF task uh, and then stick it into the workflow. So without further ado, let's jump into enterprise. So this is the enterprise admin tool and we're going to be working in this whole Matro vault. Um, the first, before you can start creating uh, tasks, you need to have an add-in that's going to run them. So we have a look under the add-ins list. The add-in list we're looking for is this uh, SolidWorks task add-in. Um, and we want to make sure that it is at the right version as well. So to make sure it's the right version, we're looking for something here that would say 2012-04, because I've got Service Pack 4 of 2012 currently installed. This one's saying 101, so we're going to update it. Right click at the very top level on the vault name and choose import. You're then browsing to program files, enterprise, default data, and inside there, at the bottom of this CX list, you see three of them, convert, design checker, and print. These are standard tasks that SolidWorks provide for everybody, but they also contain the task add-in within the CX. I'm gonna pick the convert task and hit open, and it's gonna warn me that the, there is a task add-in already there, but I want to replace it, so I'm gonna say yes to that. And then we'll get a message in just a second. And we've already got a convert task existing, so it's going to ask me to replace that too. So I'm going to say yes to that. And it tells me it's finished importing. Now, if we're going to have a look at the add-ins, we can now see we've got a SolidWorks task add-in 2012-04. We always want to be using the right version of the add-in for the version of uh, Enterprise we've got installed. So in this case, I'd also be wanting to update my dispatch as well, because you see that's 2011 rather than 2012. To see which version of Enterprise you're using, if you come up to help uh, about the administration tool, it'll tell you client version 1204. Uh, so we're looking for 2012-04. Ignore the last four digits, it's just the first six we're interested in this case. So now the task add-in is up to date, we can come down to the tasks. So these are the default tasks that have been previously imported, um, and there's a convert task, a design checker task, and a print task. But we're going to create our own. So right click on task and choose new task. And when this pops up, first of all, we're going to give this a uh, task name. So I'm going to call this uh, auto PDFs, something simple. Then we need to select the task add-in that we want to use. So we've got a list here and there's only one uh, that works, the task add-in we just created or just brought in. Bring that in, we can see the list update slightly. We then can start adding things like input cards and users. So this is starting to actually create the, the de detail behind the task name. So first of all, input card. Input card is where you want to uh, you create a data card that you want to ask the user questions in order to fill in bits of the data card of the output file, for example. In this case, because we want things to be automatic in the background, we're not going to ask the user any questions. We can also execute the task as uh, a number, a particular user or just as the person who's logged in. The reason you get this option is so that you can give people no permissions to create files, but they can still create PDFs, for example, um, because, the, because they execute this task as a different user who has that password. We then have a number of retries on failure, so if things are going wrong, how many times should enterprise try to work through it? Um, if you leave this as zero and zero, basically it never fails uh, by timing out, but it won't retry if it does fail for any other reason. We're then going to look at execution method. Um, execution method, what we need to do is, first of all, have a number of computers supporting the task, and we will do this in just a second. We also need to say, let the system choose from the pool of computers that are supporting it, prompt the user to choose. Again, we want to uh, make this automatic and in the background, so we're not going to ask the user. We can also say execute on the, compu execute on the computer where the task is initiated. Um, this is fine if all the machines are going to have SolidWorks on. It's the SolidWorks task add-in, so you need SolidWorks on the machine. Or, so that's fine if SolidWorks is on all machines. However, if you want the system to choose, then you're going to need to make sure all the machines that it's choosing from have got SolidWorks on. So we need to make sure my computer is supporting the task. So down on the blueberry, we want to right click and you've got task host configuration. We move into here and we're going to say that for the Firevault Harmatro, which is the one I'm using, 
we are going to say that I am going to permit um, this machine to run the SOLIDWORKS task adding tasks. I'm going to hit OK and refresh list and now my machine appears. So I'm going to give my allow my machine to support the task but I'm going to let the system choose which one to use out of the pool. We then come to menu command. So this is if you want uh, somebody to be able to right click and do the action as well as do it automatically with the workflow. As I said earlier, we're going to make this one automatic, so I'm not going to display a menu command. But essentially, we would tick this, fill in the command, fill in uh, the sort of pop-out help text if you want it to, what you want to appear, and, and you fill those in to suit uh, your users. Right, we now come to the script button. Now, this is where I could type in all the uh, macro code in order to do what it is I want to do. Now, in this case, I don't want to have to do all that typing. Unfortunately, SolidWorks give us three interfaces, file conversion, general, and printing, where we won't have to uh, do the script ourselves. So we're going to click file conversion. We now get a message that we're going to have to restart the task in order to see the new interface. So I'm going to hit OK to that, and then OK out of the task control panel, and then reopen it. And what we will see on the left hand side is these lists have changed, this list has changed slightly. So we've done menu command and now this time we've got conversion settings as the next option. So the first question is what output file format we're going to use. We can prompt the user where a box pops up and it says which file format do you want to do from this list or you can explicitly specify first. So I'm going to specify PDF now. I can also now set my, set my uh, SOLIDWORKS options for PDFing. I'm going to leave those as default. We now get to say what is it we're actually going to convert. So configurations, are we going to export and PDF all configurations? Yes. Am I going to allow the user to change the setting? Again, looking at our intent of this being automatic in the background, I'm going to stop the user being able to change the setting. So this is for models. For drawings, what sheets are we going to output? All sheets, again, not allowing the user to edit it. And then multi-sheet output, do I want to create one output one output file for every sheet of the drawing, or do I want to put all the sheets in one output file? In this case, all the sheets in one file. And again, don't allow the user to change. And source file references, when it opens up, because it's going to open up the drawing in SOLIDWORKS, how, which uh, reference files is it going to use to do the rebuild prior to the print. And I'm going to say use the latest version of my reference files in the vault, but you could also say use the as built version um, instead. And again, we're not going to allow the user to change the setting. So now we move on to the file card. So empty box, what this is saying is when I convert a drawing to a PDF, what uh, data card properties do I want to copy from the original file? to the destination file, the output file. So I'm going to do just a couple of very simple ones. So we're going to add a variable and then we're going to select the source as being number, if I can find it in the list, there we go. And we're going to make the destination also number because my cards match up. We're going to do the same for description. Oh, missed it, there we go. And I could continue this for all of the properties that I want to come across. I'm just going to do one more because I think we've got customer in this list. There we go. And I want to bring customer name across as well. And again, like I said, I could continue this for as many properties as I feel is necessary. Uh, and then we're going to hit go to the output file details. So when I'm outputting a file, I basically I need to give the system a name to output to. Now in this case, we're going to have the source folder path, so it's coming from where the file is at the moment, and it's going to the source file name, the source file extension, and then the configuration name that's being exported. And this is giving me an example. So you see C whole matro, because that's the name of my vault, uh, part, SLD, PRT, default. Now, I don't like having my source file extension on, and I don't like having my configuration name on. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have the source file name and then hyphen and we can pick off this list of variables we can have the source file revision so this is going to come across as part A1 we can also put in uh, manual folders as well manual text so if I wanted this to be I've got my drawing and then in my subfolder I've got my PDFs 
I can quite simply type PDFs in there. So this is going to be wherever the file is and then in the subfolder PDFs and it's going to be called the original name and then the revision. Do we allow the user to change the output path? Again, this is automatic, no user interaction. I can also create a file in a second location, format it in exactly the same way as I have up there uh, and it will then spit out the file to that location. Uh, so if you want something in the vault and something out of the vault, for example, or if you want one to go in the project folder and one to go in an overall PDFs folder, both are, both are suitable reasons for doing a second location. This option here, create a reference from destination file to the source file. This means that if you click on the PDF, you would see in the contains list, you would see the drawing that created that PDF uh, or the, the model that created that PDF and vice versa in the way used. Uh, personally, I like to have that ticked because it enables you to see if PDFs have been created of models just by clicking on the model. Duplicate file name handling. If I created two PDFs of this file at this revision, what happens to the, the first one? So we've got two options. One is replace, i.e. delete the old one and put the new one in its place. Uh, so that's sort of making sure there's only ever one PDF. If you can't do get the older versions. There's just one PDF out there. Or we've got create a new version of existing files. I'm going to create a new version, and that means that if we have one PDF every time something gets a revision number, it means I'll be able to see a PDF of each revision number going back through time. And then finally, we've got an error log folder. So if there is an error, where is it going to store that error? And in this case, it's going to put it in logs, auto PDFs. And the auto PDFs bit comes because that's the that's what I called the uh, the task. Now I'm going to I'm going to leave that alone. That's absolutely fine. The advanced scripting options button. If I click this, you'll notice this page looks a lot like uh, the script page that I saw originally before I changed the task user interface type. Um, and it contains all of the macro that will run in SOLIDWORKS to convert the file. You don't need to touch any of that unless you want to do something very specific. You can leave it absolute, absolutely alone. Usually the only thing you need to check on here is if you have more than one version of SOLIDWORKS installed, what version of SOLIDWORKS you're going to try and do the conversion in. Uh, so sometimes that is, is worth checking, particularly if you upgrade and somebody has, say, 12 and 13 on their file, you're using Enterprise 13, you're using SOLIDWORKS 2013 files, but everything's failing, you might find it's because actually it's been set to use SOLIDWORKS 2012 and it, SOLIDWORKS 2012 can't open the files. So I'm going to leave that well alone. Uh, and we're going to move on to the next to page. And this is permissions. Who is it that can use this task? And at the moment, it's only set to admin. We can also come along and have a look at groups. We're going to say, let's say, managers and documentation people can use this, uh, and we'll leave it like that. And we can see this user update with uh, the inherited permissions for those users. We've then got success and error notifications. These work in very much the same way. Um, are we going to tell people if things have worked? Are we going to tell people if things have failed? So success notification, we can notify the user who launched the task. We can also choose to notify explicit people every time it works. And then basically you fill in what's going to appear in the, um, in the email they receive. So we're going to type some information in there and then text. Uh, let's just say, uh, let's just say PDF converted on and let's just tell them it's happening on the ho which computer ran the uh, the file so we know that that so the user who launched the task will know it's, if it's succeeded now error notification we might also want to notify the user who launched the task and in this case also tell the admin so he gets a, an email so he gets an idea of uh, if things are going wrong without the user having to come and pester them um, in this case we'll just sort of do the opposite otherwise it won't make sense and we know that that's that's the machine that it failed to create it on and we've now completed it so we're going to hit OK we have now created a task because we decided not to have a menu item there's no way for a user to make that task to run at the moment but we want it to run automatically in the background 
In order to make it run automatically in the background, we need to add it into the workflow. So if we start a workflow up, um, at the moment there are already tasks happening in uh, certain areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that every time somebody says, I'm going to approve this with no approval required, I still want to generate a PDF. So I'm going to come into the properties and we've got a number of actions that happen. In this case, we're setting a variable incrementing revision. That's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to add a new action and we're going to say uh, create auto PDF is going to be in my description and the type is going to be execute task so that it runs my task and the task is going to execute is my auto PDF so I could have picked any of them here but I'm going to choose my automatic one and then we're going to run it for files and we're going to only run it for SLD DRWs and hit OK we can now see that appear in the actions list and hit OK to that and so when somebody goes down this loop here, the PDF will be created automatically. And that, as they say, is it. I mean, it, once you've created a task and added it to a workflow transition, it will run, assuming you've got permission to run it on a file, it will run every time that file goes down that path. Um, when you uh, are running the task, the task will appear in the task list before it's finished and then we'll drop down uh, and you can sort of keep an eye on things and where they're running and it's always a good idea to do that when you first set up a task in order to make sure it is running correctly right we've uh, looking forwards we've got some webinars coming up uh, next week next Thursday we've got uh, using the 2d to 3d migration tools so this is bringing old AutoCAD potentially or other 2D data into SOLIDWORKS and making it into lovely 3D data. On the 18th of July we've got a webinar about the belt and chain functionality and then on the 25th we've got the, the new intersect tool so a webinar on the new intersect tool in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Uh, as always if you've got any questions or you think of anything afterwards you want to ask feel free to get in touch with us either on the email or phone number at the bottom of the screen there. But otherwise thank you very much for watching.